Hello everyone, Robert Marzullo here from Ramp Studio Comics. Welcome back. So now we're going to work on some character design and digitally painting a character. First we got to sketch out an idea. Uh, so I'll walk you through that process. Let's first create a new file. File new. In this particular instance I want to work with 8.5 by 11 at 600 dpi. So that's going to be 8.5 wide by 11 tall. And 600 dpi will just give you plenty of information uh, for a raster file like this uh, and I prefer for the, the type of design that we're going to do in this case to be a little bit more of an 8.5 by 11 than 11 by 17. Uh, 11 by 17 I generally will work at 300 dpi and that will be more than adequate. And just keep in mind 300 dpi is more than adequate for most instances as well. It really just depends on what your overall needs are and what your system can handle. Okay so what we're going to first do is I'm going to start with the regular pencil tool and uh, you can use either one of these. I'll make sure that uh, brushes are included or accessible for the work that you're doing here. And what I want to do is first designate an idea. So the idea I have in mind is that I want like an elven warrior princess type girl fantasy art uh, where she's kind of holding up a sword. So for that design I'm going to have like one arm uh, kind of up a little bit. So I start off with usually this very uh, basic rudimentary kind of series of shapes. So I do something for the upper abdomen and I start to try to picture the tilt that you get in there. So notice that I've got the, the neck going back, the chest going forward like that, and then the spine would go you know, kind of curved like this. And then for the pelvis I would do something like, I'll generally draw the openings for the, the legs like this. It was as simple as just some disc shapes. So really early on I'm trying to get that bend in there. Even though this is going to be a pretty basic pose, I still want to make sure that I have a bit of dynamic flow uh, to the body pose. If not, it can come out uh, very boring and, and very static. Um, and even the pose is uh, kind of just a standing pose, I want a little bit of a dynamic feel to it. So I'm going to put some foreshortening there as well. A lot of times when I do foreshortening like this, uh, I'll put like just these openings for the wrist and where the arms connect and intersect and things like that. And then I'll quickly just get a hand in there. In this case, it's going to be a fist uh, holding um, a weapon. So I'll put that in there just rather, you know, kind of crudely. It's nothing that's going to make it to the end result. Like a lot of times when I do this, um, I'm not worried too much about it looking perfect because there's going to be a lot of refinement from here to the end result. Uh, and I think too if you really train yourself to think about that, you don't beat yourself up when things uh, don't immediately look right and you just continue to press forward and work uh, through the artwork. So, so I want to have the curvature to the waist in there. I want to have um, this kind of being the weight bearing leg, I guess I should draw that as a forward curve like this. And then one kind of uh, off to the side a little bit. And I can, you know, then go on top of this and start adding in some cylinder shapes just to kind of flesh it out a bit and see if this is uh, working. And I'm going to have the other arm kind of held back like this and holding a shield. So let me get that in there real quick. Just again, a series of basic shapes. Nothing too pretty and too correct. Just uh, just get the information going. And we'll have some kind of shield off to here. Like this. And then I want to give the impression that she's kind of looking up uh, just a little bit. Not too much, but enough to just not make it a straight on shot to the face. So what I try to do there whenever I design these characters is I try to you know just change little things um, make little things look a little bit more interesting than just a plain Jane. Uh, for instance if you get in the habit of drawing forward facing shots all the time uh, the characters no matter how cool the bodies look they'll just tend to look uh, well repetitious for one but then also just just plain just very lackluster and not alive you know so to make characters look alive you want the curvature to the spine you want tilts from the head to the shoulder to the pelvis all to be a little bit different orientation 
Uh, you want some foreshortening, you want some overlapping of forms. Uh, we don't have much of that here, but uh, we'll get a little bit of that with the sword probably, something like this. So all these things kind of go together. And even though this is just, a, again, that basic kind of pose, uh, by the time we do all these things, it will make it look more interesting. It will make it look a little bit more well thought out. So, uh, so if you notice, I'm just putting that cross section kind of tilting up to immediately define the, uh, the upshot of the face. And I'm not so entirely consumed with uh, proportions. I am trying to get some general proportions in place and definitely trying not to make it uh, not make sense. But I know that with digital, one of the really neat things is that I can adjust proportions really quickly. So I'm um, just kind of getting in all the main ingredients, you know, all the main parts to the, the picture right now. Like I said, this is going to be an elvish uh, character, so I'll give her the pointed ears. Uh, she's going to have some some like shoulder armor and I can already tell I need to widen out the shoulders and uh, again adjust uh, some proportions as we go here and generally when I draw like this one of the first things I tend to do is fix the biggest problem first so like one of the things that's sticking out like a sore thumb to me is this arm it doesn't have the feeling that I'm kind of shooting for so what I'm going to do is try to adjust that first. And I may, you know, with force running, I generally have to draw things a couple times. Not always, but uh, more times than not, I end up having to do that. And uh, it's okay. It's, it's, I always tell people force shortening is one of those things that it takes uh, years to get the hang of. And it's really not something we're used to seeing as much as all the other stuff that we tend to draw. So that's why we have a little bit harder time grasping exactly what we're after. We can imagine it, and we've got a very good depiction uh, in our imagination of what we're after, but putting that on paper sometimes can be a bit uh, more cumbersome. So, But not to worry, we will get there. Okay, so I think I want the fist a little more straight on. So if you notice, even with the fist, I just draw it as a series of basic blocked shapes um, just to really get the information in there rather quickly and figure it all out. That's why I, I tend to stay in the rough sketch stage as long as possible uh, to really work out as many details uh, that I can see going on here. Let's go ahead and hit Command T and scale this up. I want her to really take up a lot of the page here. In fact, I actually want parts of the the weapons and her going off the page to uh, to add a little bit more um, feeling of uh, presence to the character. I feel like if you put everything uh, from the character on the page, it tends to make the character look a little bit uh, less powerful and less dominant. Okay, so let's get this in here. And if you notice, I'm just tweaking little things as I go. Um, uh, I'll start to soft erase as well. And one of the really neat things about soft erasing is that you're basically building up more and more information as you go. So if you do it just right, and, and I try to leave as much of that information on the page for as long as possible, uh, you can really kind of flesh out things and, and kind of sculpt the artwork. Uh, which is always what I'm I'm shooting for. I'm always trying to think like I'm sculpting a piece of clay more than I'm drawing on a piece of paper. Now another thing I like to do, and this is probably about the time to do it, uh, I'll name this over here by double clicking on the layer, call it step one, and I'm just going to copy that by dragging it here. There's our copy, double click here, backspace, and step two. And I like to just show progression in my work uh, as I work up through my sketch. I really like to do it as much through the entire piece as possible. But through the sketch, I find it to be very, uh, very beneficial. And, you know, it helps me to really see the direction I took with the piece and uh, what things may have been uh, positive choices and uh, where, you know, I may have made some mistakes in my choices, things like that. But I try to think about it with every new 
uh, movement and, and thing that I changed in the artwork, I'm still getting closer to the end result, even if it's a mistake, because it's teaching me what not to do uh, within the artwork. So it's it's all good stuff, you know. It's never it's never bad. Any of these choices you make and any of these things that you put down are all still uh, good bits of information. So kind of figuring out the shape of the hilt here, like that. And again, just keep the, the rough sketch rough and really let the ideas uh, kind of flourish in that uh, process. You know, and, and don't worry about your line making being so um, precise at this point. Because uh, even these scribbles, sometimes I'll just scribble, especially with textures and things, but even with just design elements or, you know, even anatomy at times. Um, because as I soft erase, and I'll show you that here in a bit, and start to build up over top sometimes those those little scribbles will give you ideas um, so it's all again good information and you know I try to leave as much on that page as possible until I'm really sure about what I want uh, in the you know in the overall effect the painting okay and we're probably going to put some um, like kind of ice mountains in the background there and then also she's gonna have like a, a flowing uh, cloak or cape or something like that I like doing stuff like this because it allows me to bring in some other dynamics to the uh, scene and I could do little things like you know bring it up here and show the the flip of the, the material and you know so you can do all kinds of things and it shows good motion because of the kind of billowing effect that you're able to get in there We'll try something like that and for the background like I said we'll do like these kind of spiky ice mountains which should give us some neat uh, things to paint as well and I'm thinking about composition but mainly in the sense of like the layering right at this point so you know the direction that she's facing I really just want that up shot like she's looking over camera and then as far as the the overlap that are that are created or the overlaps that are created from each element is more what I'm focusing on so there's not a whole lot of great composition here uh, but it will still it should still direct the viewer to about right here um, so that's that's ultimately what I'm shooting for and the way that I'm layering the uh, the pieces to this So there's our there's our beginning rough sketch right there so we're gonna keep progressing on from here and refine this and get it uh, closer and closer to the end pencil result that we're gonna need for paint alright so that'll wrap up this lesson let's move on to the next